Faith on Friday from St. John's Walton. Just to let you know, this is a relatively simple service, um, just with me, the Reverend Matthew Hunter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We pray together the prayer of preparation. Please do join in if you know the words. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayers of penitence. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. And together we say, Almighty God, O oh, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to the Gloria, and again, if you're familiar with the text, please do join in. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We come now to the Collect, and you might like to pause the recording for a short moment of silent prayer. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The readings for the Friday of the fifth week of Easter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One night the Lord said to Paul in a vision, Do not be afraid, but speak and do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one will lay a hand on you to harm you, for there are many in the city who are my people. He stayed there for a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the tribunal. They said, This man is persuading people to worship God in ways that are contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Gallio said to the Jews, If it were a matter of crime or serious villainy, I would be justified in accepting the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a matter of questions about words and names and your own law, see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of these matters. And he dismissed them from the tribunal. 
Then all of them seized Sosthenes, the official of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But Gallio paid no attention to any of these things. After staying there for a considerable time, Paul said farewell to the believers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. At Kencre, he had his hair cut, for he was under a vow. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's a remarkable reading. Um, obviously, there's an ongoing dispute throughout Acts between Paul and um, those who oppose him from his his uh, his origin as a, a a Jew, a member of the synagogue. And then at the end, he had a haircut, for he was under a vow. And next we have the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. When a woman is in labour, she has pain, because her hour has come. But when a child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish, because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. On that day you will ask nothing of me. Very truly I tell you, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Just as an aside, I can't help thinking that that uh, text is obviously written by a man because it says of uh, giving birth, when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. Um, I'm sure in some sense that's true, but, uh, and perhaps speaking as a man, it's entirely hypocritical of me to even comment, but I'm fairly sure that most women I know can at least remember how much it hurt. But anyway, moving on. The point of that, um, that passage, that text, seems to be that even if something is very hard, that once the pain passes and whatever comes after it um, arrives, then there's a, a moment of moving on, and hopefully that's something as joyful as a birth. But of course the, the parallels to the current period are fairly obvious. There's a collective societal pain, as well as a terrible pain for those who have lost loved ones or been ill themselves. And for those who have been most particularly affected by this period, I'm not entirely sure that that pain can pass. It may be the case that for medical professionals, for example, the, the mental health effects will be something that they'll live with for a considerable time. And uh, I saw that there was, a, I think, a BBC article today referencing a call to act now to prevent wide-scale post-traumatic stress disorder and PTSD among medical professions, professionals. The, <clears throat> the, the need or the desire to move on, I think, is strong in all of us. And we saw that last weekend, arguably, in the public's reaction to messages about the potential easing of lockdown. <clears throat> Excuse me. As it happens, we've seen a, a fairly modest um, easing of those restrictions. But I guess the, the mentality is still there, the desire is still there to get to the other side of this and to some extent forget all about it. But I don't think we're going to be able to do that, whether that's because it's affected us personally and we still have to live with the, the, the memories and the feelings and the trauma of that, or whether it's the societal effect that we feel, perhaps particularly in terms of the... Uh, economy or the ways in which we interact with each other, the kind of businesses that open and when they reopen, the effects of this are going to go be with us for a long time to come. So as much as we, we might want uh, a clean ending and a sense of moving on, and I know that uh, all of us, when we're ill, we just want to get better and stop thinking about it. Never mind, stop being ill, just, just stop thinking about it. 
we're not necessarily going to get that release for a long time. So how do we cope with that uncertainty? I think one of the things that's been helpful for me is to have a, I hope, reasonably realistic idea of the, the timetable and not doing anything that you don't feel safe about doing. I think as a church nationally, there's a phased plan to work towards um, reopening, but each parish has uh, a degree of say as to what they do and don't want to do. So in the same way that we um, we went into a, a lockdown and we took uh, cautious measures relatively quickly, I think correspondingly we'll be coming out of this period uh, relatively slowly and, and again very, very carefully at St John's. And, and I hope that's something that people are, are generally okay with. Because the the urge to get back to normal is a very normal and um, psychologically obvious one. But the the trick, I think, in all of this is to take it as it comes, take it at the right pace, uh, not in, induce the birth, so to speak, if that's um, not an inappropriate medical analogy. And of course, on that analogy, it will be absolutely necessary at some point. But the the medical professionals um, who who guide the process of birth um, guide it on the basis of um, expertise and on the basis of being present and gauging that situation. And I think that's all any of us can do at this point, try and take advice and react as sensibly and as uh, prayerfully as possible. I hope everyone's um, doing okay, and I hope you feel that we're gauging the situation right and that you personally can do so as well. Thanks for listening once again. And now we come to the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we come to the press. Lord, we pray most particularly at this time for all those whose families are expecting uh, the birth of a child. We pray perhaps especially for um, the mothers in uh, this current situation, for healthcare professionals, for all those who support the bringing of children into the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us also at this time not to be too quick to rush back to normal. Help us to have a sense of what is sensible and safe. Help us to take appropriate steps at the appropriate time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in government faced with making difficult decisions. We pray for 
the future of our world, the future of this nation. For all those who have been ill, for those who have lost loved ones, those who have died. For our economic recovery, for jobs, for people's health and well-being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Lord, we bring before you all those things on our hearts and minds at this time. We ask that you would be with us and you would help us to keep safe. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the peace, and if you're uh, listening to this recording with someone else, please do feel free to share the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. We share with one another a sign of peace. Our final blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for listening to Faith on Friday. We'll be back on Sunday with At Your Service.